You walk into a gas station, restrooms on the left, jar of Kool-Aid pickles on the right. Huh? Now don't turn your nose up just yet. To some, this is glory in a jar. What are the flavors and indulgences that make some of these odd foods of the South so appealing? Meet us at the table and we will tell you. I'm Lainey. And I'm Laura Beth. And we are Steel Magnolias. The strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. And we've got plenty of room at our table. So pull up a chair. And we're back with another cultural dip into life in the South here on the Steel Magnolias podcast. Hope you guys are having a great week. Culture, you know, really is shaped a lot by food. For sure. Yes. I love when people start drawing in the impact of food, the heritage of food, yeah. and what it has meant to previous generations and then what it means today. So it's this fascinating. This is going to have some, some laughs, I'm sure. It is fascinating. Before we get started, I wanted to thank our patrons. We love you. And yes, we yes, yes. could not, seriously, could not have afforded to keep the podcast going without, without. you. That's yes. right. Yes. So if you want to learn how you can get our bonus episode, which is the Southern Sister Chat, plus a super cute t-shirt and other Southern treats sent to you, then please visit patreon.com slash steel magnolias. One of our patrons, Jason, up near DC, messaged us the other day and said, we have the best Patreon. So I think he actually supports other creatives as well. And I'm so happy to hear that someone that's been with us for almost two years is happy. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. You know, happy with our perks. So, okay. Today, we are talking about odd Southern foods. And there are some bizarre ones. But we're talking, I mean, a little more bizarre than like peanuts in a glass bottle of Coke. That is a little odd. That's kind of an odd pairing. That's an odd pairing or cornbread put in buttermilk yes that's something that our mom loves yes very southern yeah but that's just an unusual pairing yeah cornbread and buttermilk alone are not that unusual right I don't think no these are like (laughs) this is odd just from the get-go like this ingredient or this put in your mouth is (laughs) is odd (laughs) and and we're saying that's what I was gonna say we're saying it's odd because you know it's not something that we eat on a regular basis or something but there's a reason that it's an offering because people like it. Sure, absolutely. And there again, they hadn't stopped selling some of these in the I'm gas sure station. There's things that I love. I love wasabi. Like some people are like, "Oh my gosh, that's yeah. disgusting." Yeah, you know. Yeah, acquired taste or yes. different palate. So yeah, we're just gonna popcorn around and talk about some very kind of odd or bizarre foods that are flavorful to us southerners well you mentioned one in the intro kool-aid pickles <laughs> such a funny i remember seeing that in those huge jars huge jars in the south in gas stations like you mentioned or just yeah some people even call them coolicles yes <laughs> yes <laughs> they were pretty much developed in the mississippi delta so from many what I things understand. were right yeah. like yeah. they have a very strong culture i believe there so if you are into very sweet things you would be this would be kool-aid as a brine like the the powderiness of a co- with packet of kool-aid juice yes along with it so like the sweet and tart together so lots of sugar but yes the crunch of the pickle the saltiness that's already in a in pickle the, mm-hmm. It sounds like something special. I would. I haven't tried this, but I would be very willing to try this. Yes, I would be willing to try this as well. I'm not a huge pickle eater. Like okay. I, I like them okay. Yeah, you know. But they. A lot of people say this tastes like candy. Okay. Well, so I have a sweet tooth, so I'm all about some candy. Depending on how long they sit in that mix. Yeah. More prominent flavor's gonna come yeah from the kool-aid and color like that's what's True. funny about this is whatever color mm-hmm. kool-aid makes you're using is what color yeah. your pickles are gonna be yeah. so pinks and reds primarily mostly oranges 
I mean, apparently, I did read this. The most popular flavors that are used is the cherry, okay, tropical punch. I believe that. Yeah, grape. See, I was about to ask you, did they do grape? Because I don't think I've seen grape. Blue raspberry, oh, which that's... would be hilarious because it would be that bluish. And your whole mouth would be blue. Yeah. Lime and orange. Those are apparently the most popular flavors, but any flavor you prefer is... Okay, that's a pretty... That's like an option. almost the whole gamut of Kool-Aid <laughs> flavors. I didn't hear a strawberry lemonade in there. I that usually would be have seen the red, though. Yeah. The cherry, cherry. Or the tropical punch. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Well, it sounds like something special. So if you see it Basically, in a gas station. all you have to do if you want to try this is, you know, the sugar and the Kool-Aid in with the pickle juice that's already in the jar. Mm-hmm. Pour it back over the pickles and put it in the refrigerator for about a week. And you shake it every other day to make sure that the brine is like. Okay. Completely distributing. Okay. Over all of the pickle. Okay. And it'll take on that flavor and color. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's probably going to be of the ones I have on my list, the most easy to prepare at home, like the the least uh, difficult and the least sort of, um, what should I say, like... That labor this, intensive yeah <laughs> yes thank you that yes that's exactly the well, word here's I was what i thought for. of how fun would it be uh, you know me i think tailgating <laughs> to do like the color of your team in with the tailgate oh, food. like if you're you know a vol fan like us have your kool-aid pickles orange yeah to go along with your color scheme of your tailgate so or, festive you know whatever your team she's not be. just good at tablescaping y'all she can pair <laughs> colors of the team into well, the food i just think that could be really fun and different that's so good i like that okay i want to mention one that like we just said that one sounds like you you could give it a shot at preparing at home this one i wouldn't because i would be nervous and that is pokeweed Oh my gosh, I didn't have this on my list. Okay, so pokeweed is a plant. It grows in my backyard sometimes. It is poisonous unless it's boiled correctly. And so that is, they're alone. I'm out. I'm out. Because I, and I mean, I'm talking poisonous, like sickly, deadly. Yes. So in the spring and early summer, shoots and leaves, not the root, are edible. So the shoots and the leaves, nothing to do with the root. With the ground. What's yeah. in, under the ground. But it's high in vitamin A. It has significant amounts of vitamin C, iron, and calcium. It's always eaten cooked. So just put raw pokeweed off the table for sure. I'm, I cannot stress enough. This has to be cooked properly. Um, and then what you probably would see would be a poke salad. Right. And it's like somebody's saying poke, P-O-K-E, salad, but it's made into one word. It's poke salad. <laughs> Now, I will look this up. Salet, S-A-L-L-E-T, is okay. actually what it's called. Okay. I thought it was that somebody was trying to say poke salad, so I'm well, wrong. Well, they do. No, that's it. You're, you're, you're right and you're, you're right and you're wrong. <laughs> and you're wrong. But we're all right and wrong the way we say it around here. So it's pronounced around the South as poke salad. The word salad, ending with the E-T, it comes from an older form of English and refers to something like a cooked salad. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. That's right and so wrong. So the country like folk that I thought were saying it wrong are actually saying it right? Yes. So okay. now you know poke salad is actually poke salad, but it is a salad. So <laughs> okay. call it what you will. But yeah, you would you would be boiling, like I said, the um, the the poke weed. The green. Yeah. Yeah. Leafy. Yeah. And I'll put a, I, I did find a recipe of somebody that, you know, knows what they're doing and had a good recipe on it so if you want to try poke salad well I'll, I'll try it i'll put it up this is one of those things you know i'm sure a lot of these things were birthed out of need for sure what's you in know? the yard what's growing yeah and we are blessed in this country to for the most part have the ability to go buy spinach and go exactly. buy you know at the grocery store oh, yeah. but if bok choy like we're on to other nations producing (laughs) stuff for sure yeah napa cabbage yeah exactly (laughs) but um (laughs) if that's not you know if we were to go through some major depression and you needed some vitamin a greens Uh you use what you got we're coming to laney's got some poke weed well i always pull it up because it gets so tall and big does it okay so i may not even have any anymore okay well i 
Oh, yeah. I'm glad you recognize it. I'll let That's it cool. come in if we, if we get in a depression. Okay. The Mississippi Delta, again, another thing born out of that area. Well, Corinth, Mississippi. I'm not sure if that exactly where that is. Have you ever heard of a slug burger? No. <laughs> but Corinth, Mississippi came up. I think they had a funny festival that we mentioned. So... If that they have a slug like, burger festival. Oh, maybe that's. I don't think we mentioned it, but I'm like, we have a festival for everything. We really There's do. There's probably a Kool Aid pickle festival. I just don't know where it is. Oh, we really do. I have some festivals to mention later. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> well, there's a slug burger festival in Corinth, Mississippi. Okay. Now, wow. in North, oh, it's Northeast Mississippi and North Alabama is okay. where this is popular, this slug burger. It is a patty made from a mixture of beef and pork. Oh. And an inexpensive extender, such as soybeans. So there again, oh. this has come from a need. We don't have a lot of beef or we don't have a lot of pork. How can we make can this we go make further? This... We make a... Why are they calling it a slug, though? That is... That's a disservice to the slug burger, honestly. Because what you just described sounds great. Sounds decent, I would totally it? do that. Well, it's deep fried and typically served <laughs> on a bun with just like a hamburger. Mustard, pickles, onion... Okay. You know, with side of fries or onion rings or something like that. But apparently it was also, it was originated from somebody named John Weeks. And so it was called the Weeks Burger. Okay. And then later called a Slug Burger. Okay. So I don't know where that exactly came from, but it's the extending of. Yeah. That's smart. Meat. Again, out of need. That's right. Okay. I'm going to mention one that I haven't seen for a few years. And I don't know if I'd ever seen it before. Which was Frog Legs. Oh, yeah. At our great Aunt Boots' funeral in the Fellowship Hall <laughs> where all the food was laid out. They had fried frog legs. And it's just exactly what you think of. Yeah. Frog legs. Now, you fried see up. this worldwide. Yeah, that's true. You know, but in America, I don't see it a lot uh, other than in the South. In yeah. And you see it a lot in coastal places. That's big in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Places where, you know. There's a lot of frogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so. if you like salted and fried food, you would like frog legs. Yep. So there you I go. don't really know if I got to say much more about that. You get the picture. I'll tell a funny story. Um, I was um, maybe too brave for my own good. I went to China alone. Oh, my gosh. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. And the first week I was with a family, so it was great. The second week... I was alone, and that was probably crazy. But I went to this one restaurant. Now, many of the restaurants, this is not like when you're in Europe or something and menus are in English. They have an English oh, no. option. No. No. And because of it being a communist country, Google Translator doesn't work, any wow. of that. They have a lot of control of what you can use and not use on oh, your phone. Oh, my goodness. So I have nothing. I'm playing charades. So I basically would go into a restaurant and look at the pictures and point and kind Uh of like, what is that? You know, (laughs) and um, I saw this one picture that looked lovely and I'm pointing to it and I'm like trying to get the girl to tell me and she can put in her phone. She has a translator that will work. Oh, okay. And so she puts it in her phone and turns it around and it said bullfrog. And I'm like, oh no, (laughs) let me me try to find something else. (laughs) That is and hilarious. That actually brings me to a point of, we were talking about food that comes out of need. Yeah. In a lot of places in the world, like think about a China and what the sheer population is. Right. They eat all parts of all animals. Yes. Yes. So I saw things like duck bills fried. Wow. Like you can still see that's what it is. The shape. I didn't need a sign to tell me. I would me. never think that that was edible. Things like that. Yeah. Where I was just like, okay. Wow. Well. Wow. I haven't tried it. Maybe it's a tasty, okay. crunchy food. Well, I don't know. So I'll start with some of the ones we do here too. Pickled pig's feet. Oh yeah. That's big here. I would never have thought that pigs, if, if it were just left to me to decide, I would never have thought looking at that. But yeah. You know what it is from the shape. You it's know what it is. <laughs> yes. Split and hooved little leg. Yeah. Little yeah. foot. Yeah. Fast forward 30 seconds if we're grossing you out. But uh, yeah, so just four pig's feet cleaned and then you're going to get, you know, bay leaves, white vinegar, salt, sugar, onion, maybe a whole green pepper, salt and pepper to taste and that can be pickled. So many things can be pickled. Did so. you know that those are sometimes called trotters? 
<laughs> which makes no. sense. They're also, I found this interesting, very high in protein and particularly in collagen that's in those tendons oh. and skin. So it's considered by many authorities to be very good for the joints and the skin health. Wow. I wouldn't have thought of wow. that as a healthy no, food. No, for sure not. But if it's good for your joints and skin, I mean, yeah, go collagen. Wow. Go pig's feet. <laughs> there you go. Well, let me tail back just on that. I know, yeah. I know, just again, from the hog, fried chitlins. Oh, yeah. So what is a chitlin, you might be asking? Well, it is, again, fast forward 30 seconds if you are a little <laughs> squeamish right now. It is the small intestine of a pig, and it's boiled and then fried and then served with, like, apple cider vinegar and maybe even hot sauce. Yeah. And Some people call them chitterlins. Okay. Some people call them chitlins. But gas stations as well would be selling this. So pickled feet, pickled pig's feet, fried chitlins, Kool-Aid pickles, all th- all three of those so far, I know you could find at a gas at station, a gas station in the around here. Uh, some other unusual, just I guess, meat parts. Uh huh. Oxtail. Have you ever heard of oxtail? I don't know if I have. So that's often used in stews, slow cooked. Okay. But it's the tail okay. of the cattle. Yeah, I don't know what else to say oh, about that, but and, that is um, something that people eat. And pig, yeah, pigtail, that would be uh, like a meat dish served with like green bean or turnip greens, um, black eyed peas, boiled cabbage. It actually seems like there's a lot of recipes that you could use pigtail for. So, I mean, you might be listening to this going, uh, we ate pigtail at my house, but we prepared it more like, you know, with like an Asian sort of flair to it. I think there's a lot of variety in what you can do with pigtail, so... Well, now, one word that I have heard over the years, I actually looked up the pronunciation because I'm like, okay, is that, am I saying this right? Awful. It's O-F-F-A-L. Oh, I don't know this. Okay. So, it's a word that refers to edible organs of animal. Okay. that varies region to region on what that might be. So, it's kind of a lump sum if. Yeah, yeah. But it does usually exclude muscle. So if somebody's talking about okay. awful, they are talking about organs, not okay. muscle meat. Okay. So anyhow. Interesting. If, if you've heard that term, that is a, I guess, sounds like chitlins would fall into awful. You yeah, know, like that's true. That's true. Overlap in some of these words. Well, and we got to mention what would what you do to use the the pig liver the part of the some parts of the pig head some cornmeal and spices and that would be liver Liver mush which mom said her grandmother made that our great grandmother pretty popular in north carolina and so oh i did say i had a festival to mention this (laughs) is it so this may have originated from german settlers okay who traveled through the south and through the appalachian mountains you know i'm talking like 17 1800s but there are three different towns in North Carolina that have liver mush festivals. You're kidding me. Yeah. So in Shelby County, North Carolina, or Shelby, North Carolina, which is where they have one of the festivals, um, they're on record as saying liver mush is the most delicious, most economical, and most versatile of meats. Wow. Okay. So, well, it has to be 30% liver yes. to be considered liver mush, but yes. it can be a blend of yeah. various things. It's usually eaten for breakfast or lunch. Wow. Okay. So. Hitting the day head on with some liver mush. (laughs) Acquired taste, I would say. Okay. Now, liver mush derives from Scrapple. Have you ever heard of Scrapple? I've heard of Scrapple, but I don't know much about Scrapple. Well, some people may be going, that's not a Southern thing. Apparently, it came from the Pennsylvania Dutch. Oh. But it's best known as an american food of the southern and mid-atlantic states sometimes i think that happens because it may not have originated here but we're the ones that are still doing it maybe so it feels so migrations that have happened of people and so they take it with them yeah anyway yeah well it's traditionally a mush of pork scraps and trimmings combined with cornmeal and wheat flour or okay buckwheat flour okay. and spices okay so it's a mush that's formed into a semi-solid 
congealed loaf. Yeah. Okay. And sliced. Okay. Pan fried before serving. So interesting. There again, people using what they had and trying to avoid waste. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Making things go a little further. Let me take a quick break from meat just for a second. Okay. Chocolate gravy. <gasps> yes. I didn't have this on my list either, but that is unusual. I tried this for the first time about three years ago. And I got to say, I still prefer a sausage gravy on my biscuit. Yes. But it really is a fun combination. If you've got a sweet tooth and you are one that would gravitate to like a chocolate croissant mm-hmm. or a donut or, you know what I mean? If you like that real sweetness in the morning, you know, it's just made with cocoa, sugar, milk, vanilla. What's not to love about that? What's not to love about that? And so, yeah, so pouring that on your biscuits. Served warm. Chocolate gravy would be served warm over a buttermilk biscuit. Now, that's not something we ever had growing up, Mm-mm. though. No. Our mom was real big into sausage gravy. Yeah. So that's usually what we would have if we had any gravy. But yeah, that's a thing. But then you also have what also is sort of different, which is red eye gravy. Now I'm back okay. on piggy parts. Yeah. So I don't like red eye gravy. I don't personally. either. It's but made with coffee. It's made with coffee, which that's why I wanted to mention it, because mm-hmm. that's odd to be making your pan fried ham and coffee yeah together it sounds unusual but that's the name though the red eyes like all that caffeine you know getting that caffeine in there yes yes thank you for mentioning that is why it's called that there's not like a redness to it or anything but yeah it's it's to you know it's sort of playing up on the sweet or the the ham's fat that has a sweetness Mm -hmm. and putting in some saltiness and anyway apparently a lot of people like it it's pretty easy to make, and that could be served over ham, and if you had some buttermilk biscuits on the side, you could sop that up like a gravy. So, Now, another thing that we kind of skipped in our pork conversation is cracklins or pork rinds. Oh, goodness. That's a huge one. Yes. And those are different but similar. Yeah. Um, to make cracklins, it's a cut of pork that has the skin on it. Right. So the pork, the pork fat and pork meat attached together yeah yeah whereas pork rinds is only the pork fat okay so fat has a lot of flavor it does so a lot of people you know like this as a salty tasty snack yeah yeah you'll see this again in a grocery stores left and right where mm-hmm. sometimes homemade pork rinds are sometimes bagged you yeah know, just yeah from a company but i've even seen pork rinds used in like fancy high-end restaurants stop now. oh yeah so like a sean brock or something that'll put like a pork rind with a little pimento cheese and like you know fluff it up and now that is funny that reminds know, me back it's probably 20 dollar appetizer sure for sure <laughs> for a very tiny little serving in the middle of a large plate yeah that reminds me of what i mean years ago when we did an episode talking on about grits. grits being yeah. on fancy menus yeah. now and how funny we thought that was yeah because that was like a cheap food so also let's talk aspic oh boy you gotta yeah so aspics are typically meat jellies yes okay i may have just gagged a little we um because <laughs> we love a congealed salad around sweet. the south that has fruit or something yes. that's what i like but i think that's what this, this is the same thing it's a savory yeah it's made with meat stock or broth instead of a sweet yeah i just swallowed I a little just, too yeah <laughs> that's what i thought i saw but um the <laughs> unusual thing and i've seen these over the you know i haven't seen them in a long time but when we you know when i was growing up and we would go to east tennessee i would see these sometimes so they will often have pieces of meat or vegetable or eggs in, in it. In it. Yeah. And it's clearish because yeah. you can see through the gelatin. Yes. So you would see the, you can see through this gelatin yeah. situation. Yeah. And so you can see like boiled eggs sliced in there, chunks of meat, vegetables, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, so it's just unusual to me because it's a savory now, I've heard of tomato aspic, and if you've heard of aspic, that yes. might be the one you've heard of. Would that have meat in it as that, well? No. That one's just that more one's like tomatoey. Bloody and Mary. You might, yes. <laughs> like that's a Bloody exactly Mary what I was gonna in say. gelatin form. Exactly. Okay. okay. Perfect example. Those were really popular 
at luncheons, yes. showers, yes. things like that in the South. Um, yeah, they'll often have bits of celery or... Yeah. It, that was a great example. It's basically a Bloody Mary in a gelatin well, form. if you like Bloody Marys, then maybe you should try it. A tomato aspic. And there's some great recipes out there. We don't, mm-hmm. I don't have one in particular because yeah. I don't love this. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> tomato aspic or meat aspic. You know, we haven't even mentioned boiled peanuts. I don't have a ton oh to say goodness. about boiled peanuts. I didn't even have it on my list. But, but if you like a soft, I will emphasize soft and salty treat because yeah. that is the surprise because you're looking at a roasted peanut and you're imagining in your head this is crunchy, a hard no. shell. No, it's been it's boiled, been boiled so, so now it's soft. But yeah, that's a huge part snack. of southern culture absolutely at roadside stands <laughs> you know they may not even be in the grocery they may have their own Out stand in the parking lot um our friend down at the alabama peanut company that's how he got his start was having a stand at the antique sales that his parents used to participate in and it was so. doing well enough that he decided to take it to the next yeah. level yeah well another um thing i have heard of but i don't believe i've ever seen this i hope i pronounce it right daub glace oh okay do tell sounds french oh it is french yes yeah. it's got french roots so the creoles make okay. this a lot still okay. um it's used for creole kind of special occasion okay things but it's a nourishing beef and vegetable stew okay um we like our stews here that's right so if you've heard of, it's kind of a meaty aspic consumed on crackers. The daub glace, I guess, is just basically a meaty aspic, just okay. like we were saying before. Okay. But it's kind of got a Creole. That's something you might see in Creole culture. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I think that's the ones I had on my list. I'm... Well, the only other thing I was going to say you might see around in the South, I don't have a lot of notes here or anything, but we pickle everything. <laughs> Yes, we do. <laughs> Everything in the world. You can see pickled beets, pickled okra, pickled eggs. Yes. Yes. I mean, in anything That's you can true. think of, basically. You know, we're known for chow chow on the sides of our beans. Yeah. And... That's Which just various pickled vegetables cabbage. together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Peppers. In fact, in my small group, we have a guy who's Korean and oh. we had a meal together okay. and um, we got talking about kimchi. Mm-hmm. Which is very popular right now. I, I feel love like. kimchi. And I'm sure it's been around for centuries. And so I had brought a bok choy dish mm-hmm. to the meal and somebody said, is that kimchi? Because I had put like a Korean sauce on it. Okay. So it had kind of a okay. reddish look. And somebody said, is that kimchi? And I said, no, it's just bok choy dish. And he was like, do y'all want some kimchi? I have some kimchi. And I'm like, yes, bring out the kimchi. Yeah. And then there was a couple people that are like, what are, what's kimchi? Yeah. Yeah. And he said, well, it's hard to describe, but, and I said, because I knew the person was from the South, have you ever had chow chow? And he said, yes, that's the closest thing I've ever had to yeah. kimchi is chow yeah. chow. Yeah. yeah. That's so, a good, good comparison. Anyway, but we, we love pickling things. We love pickling in the things. South, so. And I would say as listeners are probably thinking through this, there's probably even a whole episode we could do just like on pairings. Odd pairings. Yes. Yeah. I'm sitting here thinking about, do you remember growing up the way our mom would make a pineapple salad? Oh, yeah. The pineapple ring. So like a few pieces of lettuce. Yes. And then on top of that, you put a, from a can... Yes. A pineapple ring. Yes. And then, or two, depending. And then like a daub of... Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. And then shredded cheese. Shredded cheddar cheese and then paprika. Paprika. I don't know. I still think that's a very odd... But it's yummy. ...thing to this day. So, and some people do it with pear. Pear, Or something yes. else from yep. the can. Yes. Like It's kind half of like of a making pear. a yeah, a out pear. of what you have from the fridge yeah. and can. Yes. Again. What's in what's in the house? What's What can go far? <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I would love to see some strange foods if y'all are ones that partake of any of these or if you see some out. So at your local uh, gas station, yeah. send us your pics. So if you do, if you post a pic to Instagram, tag us and we're going to start giving out some t-shirts this week. Oh, fun. Our peace be with y'all shirts. So be sure to tag us so that we can see your picture 
but post some odd southern foods that you see around or that you it. you enjoy or that you know of all right well peace be with you Laura Beth and also with y'all <laughs>